Thus far in the creation of Josh's trees, we've gone through the cleaning process, the selection of front and the analysis of design and the application of structural wire. And now we hit this pivotal time in the year, the spring season, to go about the repotting process. We'll come back to the secondary tertiary wiring, but the repotting process is a specific operation that a tree can handle at one time of year and one time of year only. And this is during the spring season as the buds are swelling before the tree starts to grow. But before we get to the repotting process, let's first set that fundamental tone of why would we be repotting? Number one, we need to repot when we've got so many roots in this really confined environment that we can't get water into the root system. A tree needs a balance of water and oxygen to thrive and survive. And if the container becomes so full of roots, all of a sudden it's very difficult to give it the water that it needs to exist inside of that container. Number two, sometimes our particles break down over the course of time as the tree acts on those particles and the conditions act on those particles. And with that decomposition, we have less oxygen in the container and we hold too much water. And number three, and our reasons that Josh is approaching his taxes today, is to change the aesthetic. To put it from a nursery container into a bonsai container and to maximize the visibility of this tree in its new environment that it's gonna be cultivated in and shine with the aesthetic we create. Now that we understand why we would repot, let's go through that process and really understand the step-by-step -step breakdown that we're gonna be engaging with and watching Josh explore today. Number one, we've gotta remove the tree from the container. And this operation can be very delicate or can be quite easy depending on how established the root system is. Now, if the tree's adhering to the exterior walls of the container, we wanna use a very fine chopstick or a serrated cutting blade to be able to cut the roots that are actually in contact with the wall of the nursery container or the bonsai pot to cleanly separate it so we can remove that tree from the container. Okay, we don't need this anymore. I love that. Once free from the container, now we start the process of actually teasing away the soil and changing the shape of that root mass to fit the new style and the container that we have conceptualized for the tree. This means, number one, establishing the new angle of the tree on the bottom of the root mass. Just simply teasing away that soil without destroying the roots because we're gonna still use these roots. We're gonna fold them down into the container once we've gone ahead and tease them, the soil free of them and really loosen them up, okay? Over the course of Josh's experience repotting his taxis, I'm gonna be kind of mirroring the process on my own on a boxwood right next to him. And in the process of repotting the boxwood, I'm gonna be able to illustrate for Josh all of the techniques in that transitional process of conforming and sculpting that root system. <laughs> so I, I went down to the line. Okay, that's that good. Go but you have to understand that the line exists from this base out. Okay. So even this really compact area in here. Yeah, I've been a little afraid to dig in there because it's pretty tight. Don't be afraid. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna, I gotta just go for it. See how I can just sort of kind of straighten those out a little uh -huh. bit? Now you see how they're gonna lay down. And then these pieces on top that have already been cut, those yeah. are probably gonna be pieces that we get rid of. But I want this to be completely clear Loose. by the time we're done. After we establish that angle, we're gonna to start to remove any pieces of the root system that are sticking out of the container as a result of that aesthetic change. So I'm just taking off some of these drier or these less fine, coarser upper surface roots or anything sticking straight up. Notice that I'm preserving kind of this thick piece here. It clearly is connected to some substantial roots. So I'm not gonna cut that. I'm gonna use that as a feature of the tree. Are your roots getting dry at all? A little bit, huh? Yeah. Give them, you just give them a little bit of hydration. Okay, and now, here's the next thing, right? Is now we've got to come to this bottom angle here, and you've actually kind of compressed it to give you that position already, but we need to be looking at that bottom angle that sets us up for a very flat, nice new position with the tree. So you're gonna actually gonna be laying this back where the branches don't touch, coming back with that same fine piece 
and you're just gonna be teasing this out to create a nice flat pad. The tree's roots have been worked, the container's been selected, and the soil composition has been decided. If you wanna see that container selection, check out beginner series container selection video. And if you wanna learn more about the fundamental aspect of bone size soils, check out beginner series soils. Let's see how Josh does with these elements as we further the repotting process. Now that we've selected a container, we can come back to this process of conforming the root system to actually give us the space around that native root mass to be able to open up the opportunity for soil to be inserted and new root growth to occur. Obviously in bonsai, we have nuances that are specific to each species. And when we talk about repotting a conifer, a two-thirds reduction generally tends to be safe, leaving that 30% of remaining root mass unharmed by scissors or the chopsticking process. Ooh. Not too bad. That looks nice. We want to make sure that we've got the correct front of the pot chosen. So notice that this is a little bit lighter here. Yeah. As we rotate, see how this band comes through? It gets darker. Mm -hmm. The lightness, the diagonalness, with yeah. a little bit of dark on this lower side, trees moving to the right. Totally and then frumpy. here, we're, we're sort of in that light phase, less of that nuance, but we do have these pieces, this rough portion. If it were me, when we talk about delicate, we talk about slender, we think about light. Mm -hmm. And I would probably be here as the front of my container. Yeah, just when we were turning it around, this felt, this just aesthetically yeah. feels good. Yep. Okay, in having selected the front so that we don't lose it, I just mark it with a piece of chalk. And okay, now this is my front. We're now gonna prepare the container with drainage screens that cover the big holes in the bottom of the container so soil doesn't fall out. And we're also gonna set up our tie down wires that allow us to tie to the root system of the tree and secure it in the container so the tree does not move. This point of really strategizing our tie downs and accurately anchoring the tree in the container is what sets us up for success and we need to think hard about how we tie this tree into the container to make sure it's immobile. So inside of that, we see that we've got two holes here off to this side, two holes here sort of on the front right and two holes here in the back. Now this tree wants to fall to the right side. That means that we have to hold it on the left side, okay? So we automatically know we're gonna have a holding point right there, okay? Right. And when we're holding it here, if we bump this side, it's gonna wanna fall back this way. So that automatically means that we need a hold on this right side. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bridge that point right there. So my tie down strategy, knowing that I've gotta hold it here from falling to the right, that I've gotta hold it here, from what we call the rebound effect, means I'm gonna have one wire here, one wire here, and two wires here. And my wire strategy is gonna look like two wires coming out of this hole, one wire out of that hole, and one wire out of that hole. Now I'm gonna separate these because these are gonna have different lengths going to different holes. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold that angle right at the edge, stretch it across, and I'm gonna put the fingernail of my finger right on the edge of that hole. Now that becomes my holding point to go ahead and create another really nice, clean right angle, okay? So when we create that really beautiful, clean angle and we put it into that hole, it should lock into the corner of that hole and give us a maximum amount of stability and immobility, mm. okay? So I'm gonna do that for both of these wires and then I'm gonna flip the container over and insert these into the hole. go straight to the wall and bend down Got if it. you're gonna bend them out of the way to secure their position. Hey Josh, come here and check this out so that you're ready to repot your taxis. Okay. Okay, so I have my anchor wires in, my container is prepped. Now we've got to set up our soil system. Now I've got two different sizes of soil that we're working with. Mm -hmm. I've got what we call the aeration layer, larger particle size, same composition, Akadama pumice lava. 
I'm gonna use one particle layer thick on the bottom of the container to increase oxygen content through the small holes that exist. Mm -hmm. okay. Now these are the larger particles when you sift your bag of soil to get all the dust out that are gonna be on your coarser screen. And by putting just a single layer across the bottom, we know that these are too big to really cultivate super healthy roots, but they do allow extra space to increase oxygen content. That helps achieve that balance in the root system of the container. And now we're gonna put a single layer of our interior particle size that is gonna cultivate the healthy roots. And we know that we're gonna be setting any tree that we repot as close to the bottom as possible because we're already reducing the root mass so much and putting it in this small pot means we need to value all of the space possible. So you see that minimal mass, first the larger particle for oxygen, now the smaller particle to start to create that interface and cultivate healthy roots. And then I'm gonna set myself up with this central cone which when you settle the tree in, is gonna fill in all the gaps on the bottom of that root system and create that contact that gives us health over the course of time. That central cone is where you're gonna set your taxis, settle it in, fill all those spaces and have that good contact that facilitates that balance of water and oxygen. Mm -hmm. So now that you've seen how I've gone about prepping this, you can apply it to your container and set up that situation to insert your taxis into a prepped soil condition. Cool, all right, see you later. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of Josh's taxis and a coniferous need in the bonsai container, they need a good balance of water and oxygen that leans a little more on the oxygen heavy side. We take that akadama that has that water holding capacity and we also add a little bit of pumice and a little bit of lava to it. Now with our broadleafed evergreens or our deciduous, like the boxwood, I'm gonna be using a soil medium that holds a little bit more water to satisfy that tree's need. Solid Akadama is kind of the staple and the pillar that we utilize in the bonsai practice to provide that water holding capacity for our broadleafed evergreen and deciduous species. Okay, now this central mound, when we set the tree in the container, is what we're gonna utilize to settle the tree down and into the container and get that up against the bottom of that root mass because we've got so many inconsistencies. We've got a lot of undulations in the bottom. Depending on the drama of those undulations is what dictates the height of that cone. Yours is relatively flat, so you don't need a big cone. Mine is really uneven. I need a bigger cone to fill those spaces. So when I set this tree in, I'm gonna set it in in the position that I want, okay? I don't wanna sloppily set it in there and then try to fix it. I wanna make sure my container is squared up and watch how I settle, okay? So this side's a little low, I want it up a little higher. I'm gonna push in here and just slide that soil underneath that to be able to establish that angle and really slide that akadama in and around and underneath that base. Maintaining the angle that we've established across the bottom of the root mass, Josh is gonna set that tree on the top of that cone holding that angle that he's striving for in the design of the tree, and he's gonna slowly rotate the root mass to settle that tree down into that cone and work those soil particles into the bottom of his root system. Our wiring system is set up here so that we're just gonna cross over the root mass here to hold that from falling that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, now notice I'm gonna pull mm -hmm. to take up the slack, and as I rotate, I'm gonna let that wire consume, I'm gonna let the rotation consume that slack. Okay, now in doing so, our tree is now holding its position and we're trying to hide this wire as much as we can. So now we come back, we just need one turn kept. So I'm gonna cut that nice mm. and clean. Utilizing our interior soil and filling all of the negative space between the root mass and the edge of the container, we're gonna take our chopstick and just loosely fill those big open spaces to secure the tree in that position and start to integrate the soil into the root mass with those spaces that exist. How am I really supposed to know, know when I'm done okay. bulk filling this? Yeah, so once you start going around and the soil stops dropping in as much, okay, so like right here, it's not really dropping in as much. Mm -hmm. That's when we know we've gotten an adequate bulk fill and we've gotten a lot of the negative spaces filled. The detailed chopsticking process is probably the pivotal moment where we set the tree up for the greatest amount of health after the repotting process. But these small spaces are still opportunities for the contact of the soil and the root to not necessarily be made and set the tree up in a direction it might not be able to thrive. Using a finer chopstick and maximizing our angle between the rim of the container and the bottom of the root mass, we're gonna be pushing soil into those spaces 
to really get that good contact on the finest level of our soil and the finest level of our roots, meshing those two systems together and really building that system that allows us to establish a balance of water and oxygen. And could I do You can make your own sounds. <laughs> okay. Guide your journey here. This is your bonsai practice. The detailed chopsticking process should be systematic, starting at one location, moving all the way around the tree and returning to that initial starting location to make sure all spaces are filled. And See how the soil's going in? Yeah. Keep that soil feed, coming. Feed it in. Feed okay. it, feed it. That hand okay. is working. Yeah, I have to try this again. Okay, so you got, <laughs> you got white knuckles, <laughs> yeah. right? You yeah. really gotta relax. You go in with force, relax, and now, ch -ch 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 right. weight of your thumb. Throw your thumb at it. See how you're pulling up roots? Yeah. Just add soil with your scoop here. Always keep soil on top. You can see that Josh and the detailed chopsticking process is struggling a little bit. And this feel is a real experience to build and understand when we've gone far enough or when we need to go further. Feel free to explore with this. Understand that this is a process we learn the feel of over time and know that just by being aware of filling those spaces with soil and improving the contact of the soil and the root, even in your first try, you will be improving the system and setting up a scenario where your tree is gonna be healthy and successful. Okay, so let's go ahead and check and give it a, let me give it a, yeah, beautiful. So when I drive in, I don't break through that cusp, right? You can always drive into the root system. You don't want this to be rock solid, right? And when I drive in here, I feel nice contact. I have to apply a significant amount of force. You're done. That's awesome. beautiful. That's a beautiful job. We've done so great to this point. To pay attention to every detail, let's not take our foot off the gas yet. Contouring the soil to leave ourselves an eighth to a quarter inch of space along the rim of the container and removing any roots that have come free over the course of the repotting process cleans up and contours that surface to maximize the aesthetic. If you worked so hard to show that base and to get down to that spread of the rootage, then let's make sure that we see it, okay? And, and one of the apprehensions that a lot of beginners have is all these roots up here, are they gonna die? Well, we're gonna do something to protect those roots, mm -hmm. right? But having soil on top of them will just wash away over the course of time. We wanna establish that and we wanna see these different pieces of aesthetic. We're gonna use a top dressing of sphagnum and moss to be able to solidify that soil hold moisture in those surface roots, and make sure that we create an environment that's favorable for the tree to grow. Sprinkling a light layer of top dressing over that solidifies those soil particles and ensures we're not gonna destroy that aesthetic as we water the tree over the next months and years to come. Watering the tree in is the final step in repotting. We're now in the recovery process and we're gonna walk you guys through in the next Beginner Series episode, how we water the tree to make sure we build that health so we can come back and take this tree down that next step of evolution. Congratulations on finding bonsai and digging into the process of learning what this whole thing is all about. If you liked what you saw here and you wanna learn more, check out Mirai Live at live.bonsaimirai.com. Start your week free trial, dig into the library and the plethora of information as you evolve your pursuit in the art of bonsai.